Welcome to Hobby Clubhouse for the review of the Bandai High Grade After Colony 1144 Veille and Mercurius Twin Set Review, the much loved red and blue duo of the Oz mobile suits from the later parts of Wing Gundam. While many fans have hoped for them to get an HG release ever since the Leo, people have mostly been cautiously reserved about that possibility, with many fans saying that, well, sure, Viet and Mercurius look kind of like Leo, but they're not actually that similar, ruling out most of their hopes. And yet, here we are, and actually they really did inherit the basic construction of the Leo kit, but more on that later. Also, there is a companion review of this video looking at the non-grade Viet and Mercurius, so make sure to go watch that too if you haven't already. Getting right down to business, this box set is a P-Bandai exclusive release sent out in Japan in January 2021, and it was sold for a price of 4,180 yen. The box is really bulky, measuring 31 by 20 by 13 centimeters. And the box is a standard P-Bandai one, so there's no custom artwork on the front, nor any studio shots on the sides. Inside the box, the V8 comes on 7 runners, with the polycaps being just a set of these ball joint ends. The Mercurius has a little bit more with the 10 runners here, and two of them shown here are the clear adapters for stands to display the planet defensors, because other than the kit itself, you also get two of these small display stands, which are the same as the ones that you get with customized effect sets like this one right here. They're not strong enough to hold up an entire mobile suit, so you're still going to need an entire action base if you want to show them in a the pose. Mercurius has one more runner, which I forgot to show here, which are these clear yellow beam saber parts for the crash shield. These are just standard HG ones, and you've probably seen more than a few of these in other kits. Then, there's this soft rubber cord that's used for Veyet's beat cannon. It's not a wire like we got with the RG Zeong, and the cord flexes freely as you pose the kit. I do worry a little about the longevity of this since rubber does tend to have a limited lifespan and in time it becomes a little bit brittle, but I imagine it's not super hard to find a big roll of silicon rubber replacement somewhere online. Next is a sheet of foil stickers covering both MS's with a pink sticker for V8's eye sensor, and then a larger one for when the face shield's lifted, and then this round one for the targeting sensor on the beam cannon. We get the same here for Mercurius with one for the face shield down, and then one for the face shield up, and then this round one for its pistol. These long ones here are for the top of the head when the face shield is up. The yellow ones here are for the outside of the particle accelerator, and these bigger ones are for the coils on the inside of it. These four yellow ones are for the tip of the cannon's barrel. Then lastly, we have these small yellow ones for each of the planet defensor's centers. The instructions are all in black and white, and they contain nothing other than the assembly instructions. And before we move on to the assembled kit, here's a look at the V8's runner for the beam cannon. Now you can see here that there are some gates, which means that Bandai can separate this runner into just this part right here, or this. Now you only get this single runner in this box and Veya doesn't need any clone of any of these parts, but those of a sharp eye will already know what this means. The kit is ready to be adapted into the Veya and Mercurius Suvant, so if you're a fan of any of these designs like I am, you can be quite confident that at the very least Bandai has the door wide open for their releases in the coming future. So here's the completed pair, and each kit took about two and a half hours to put together. They may be built almost like a Leo, but they have way more pieces, like the Mercurius' planet defensors, which are three parts per shield. And when I said they're built like a Leo, I literally mean that their joints and everything are heavily based off of it, like the shoulders here with the T-shaped part on the inside, and the elbow joint which has a front and a back piece sandwiched together to make a single joint. The parts as you can see aren't reused from the Leo and there are entirely new molds, but they copy pasted the engineering of it. Now some people aren't big fans of the Leo's super simple construction, so this might make some of you a little bit anxious. For this pair of kits, I feel they fixed up the lesser parts of the Leo, like the wobbly thighs and the annoying ankle armor which kept popping off. And they really aren't just recolored Leos, not to say that the Leo kit is bad. Using the Mercurius here as an example, it uses a deep, solid red plastic, which is different from the lighter red that we usually get for chin parts and V-fin crests. The gray details like the small thruster nozzles on the shoulders, and the ones on the crotch area here are all in gray, and the pink of the waist here is fully done in plastic, as are the shoulders. But those pale in comparison to the top of the head here where the small pink band here is all done in plastic. 
and they even went the extra mile giving us a lighter gray for the two little circle parts here on the cheeks and that's a different hue from all the other plastics and only this part uses that little bit of color. This is by far complete enough to be a retail kit so it's odd why they aren't a retail kit. But we all know this ran very well at this point and I'm not gonna beat the dead horse but yeah what the hell Bandai. Continuing on with the common features, we have the opening face shields which requires you to pull off the top here with the closed face which reveals the big camera sensor underneath. And then all you do is replace the top with this other one with the open face. You get two antennas for each MS so you don't have to swap that part out. But you do only get Mercurius's antenna in red and then V8's antennas in blue. So you can't make color swap versions of the two unfortunately. Now let's move on to the unique features of each kit starting with the V8's beam cannon assembly. The particle accelerator is nice and detailed and when you open it up, the inner side of the lid actually has details as well so it looks good even when you open it. The coils in the middle are its own separate piece so if you're gonna paint this, it's gonna be an easy job. This part has been enlarged quite a bit compared to the 1995 old non-grade kit and this is a consistent trend with Bandai where newer interpretations of mobile suits almost always has larger weapons. The older kit has a movable handle up here on the top which the new kit doesn't which is a little strange. The accelerator is attached with an articulated arm and basically you can position it in any spot in a 3D space. The grip is excellent so you don't have to worry about it slipping from any pose you put it in. On the bottom here is actually the back portion of the cannon, and it slides out along a rail. Here you can see the rubber cord from earlier and you don't actually need to cut it. It's looped into the front part here as shown in the instructions, which is good if you're someone who gets really anxious about cutting things in the wrong length. The beam cannon barrel here is going to take a little bit of explaining because the arm here is really sophisticated. First, the arm is able to extend like this, and in the extended position, the front portion can swing. Then you can swivel the entire arm under the shoulder where these two sections will bring the barrel all the way around to the front. The joint at the very front can rotate to orient the barrel so that you can connect the back section onto it. Now the cannon can't point directly forward but Veye in the animation couldn't really do that either so Katoki kinda knew this when he was designing the MSs. The handle can swing to either side so Veye can grip the cannon either under the shoulder or have it outside the arms. For the left hand we get an open palm but you'll need to swap the hand cover since we only have enough for two pairs of hands. Lastly you swing this hand guard on the back and you have the Vayetus gun fully deployed. The older kit simply made you pull off the parts and rearrange everything and really the HG could have just done that but the designers were far more ambitious and came up with this sophisticated arm that is actually only made up of a few pieces as you can see here. It's some really smart stuff. The gun is what makes the V8 complete, and here Bandai's engineers did a superb job. The entire silhouette is drastically transformed and the gun's this long boxy shape will contrast sharply with the circular accelerator on the back. What's even better is that all of this is sturdy enough for you to handle and play around with and nothing is going to fall apart. You'd think that this whole setup would be quite fragile, but no, you can pose it and play with it without worry, so A plus for V8 here. And now let's look at what the Mercurius has to offer starting with the humble little pistol. This tiny little gun has actually become quite a beloved part of the Mercurius' design and it really is quite a handsome little pistol. The new one here is larger than the old 1995 pistol as you'd expect and the tip is compatible with the beam saber effect. So you can actually use the extra beam saber part as a shooting effect if you like. Even more iconic is the crash shield which has its three studs surrounding the tip in the center which is an integrated beam saber. Now here we can make the case that the old shield is a little bit better because not only is the old shield just as big but the sword part in the middle is nice and big and yeah I know it's the wrong color but look how big it is. It matches the animation better and the sword was never just a standard beam saber actually. Still, the shield itself looks wonderful, and the backside has a separate panel in light grey with some beautiful mechanical details whereas the old shield has just a bunch of ugly holes. And here you ask, can we put the old beam blade onto the new shield? No, no we can't. The old peg is bigger and it's not going to fit without any sort of modification. Now we can finally have a look at the planet defensors, which always felt to me like they ought to be called the satellite defensors instead. 
they are stored in two groups on a simple arm on the back. The arms don't swing to the front, which is something the 1995 kit can do. You can pull off the entire set of shields, and they each plug into each other through these little wings on the side. There are multiple spots that will accept the wings, and one of the wings on each shield can be rotated. The movement is ratcheted, so it stops at fixed positions. To pose the shields in their deployed state, each unit has a 3mm hole on the back, which fits nicely onto the clear racks that we saw much earlier. All you have to do is plug them in, and then you can have them suspended in a 3D space to your liking. Sure, it's not as playable as the old kid, and they're mostly fit for stationary display, but I think this new design more closely resembles the animation, and I don't think they could have realistically done anything too drastically different. This setup is simple and elegant, even if it's not super dynamic and movable. With all the unique parts out of the way, let's go back to some common traits with a look at the seams, of which there are actually very few. There are these right here on the top of the shoulder armor, and then these little ones on the back of the forearms, and then these on the side of the upper torso, which you won't see very often. Otherwise, the other seams on the MS's body are hidden away as panel details or molded as a continuous piece. What's not so nice are the bottom of the heels here which have a really ugly hollow space, and the spaces like these are always troublesome to fill in, and they're never really welcome, especially when the other parts of these two kits are so well designed and free of flaws. I don't think these will deter anyone from buying them, but builders will nonetheless be interested in knowing this. On to the articulation, we'll use the V8 here as our model. Starting from the top, the head goes up just a tiny little and it dips forward not that much either. It can rotate a full circle without any problems. The shoulders swing forward thanks to the swiveling socket. The shoulder armors can pivot along their pegs into any angle you like. The arms can swing outwards this much, just short of 90 degrees. And the arms can swing a full circle, but of course it's gonna be blocked if you have the equipment installed onto the back. The biceps allow a full rotation of the arms. The elbow is just a single joint, but the shape of the arms make the 90 degree bend look a little bit more than it really is. The hands are on the ball joint, so you can adjust the angle and you can rotate around a full circle. The waist bends forward just a little bit. It doesn't bend backwards at all. And surprisingly, the waist is blocked by the side armor, and it can't rotate past about 45 degrees to each side, so it's a little bit more limited than what it might look like. The side skirts do move a little bit, and you can adjust the angle of them on their ball joint. The front armor here actually does move along the ball joint a little bit, and we're gonna need this for the leg kick in a moment. The leg joint here deserves a closer look, because the entire joint is offset on an arm, as you can see here, and the joint can swing forward like this, which is pretty great. The short little peg here is a bit of a problem and the whole swinging mechanism can pop off from time to time, but it's not super loose or anything. So here, the leg when it's swung forward gives us a 45 degree kick, which yeah, it still isn't stellar, but what we can do is combine all of the joints available to us, so we can angle the side skirts up a little bit, we can tilt the armor on the front to the side a little bit, and then turn the legs along the thigh to give us a final 90 degree kick, which is pretty great when you consider that the legs are so incredibly blocky. The old kit manages just the 45 degree kick. The legs can swing out a tiny little bit if you ever need it. The knees are double jointed. The feet can swing up and forward this much. And they go back this much and they swing side to side enough for any pose that you need. I think the engineers really went out of the way to get as much articulation out of the V8 and the Mercurius as they could. The legs in particular have a much bigger range of movement than what you might initially think when you're handling the kit. And all of this comes in a kit that isn't too loose or fragile, except for maybe the thigh joints a little bit, so overall, I think you'd be happy with these kits. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3-point verdict on the Bandai HGAC V8 and Mercurius box set. Number 1. It uses high quality materials and it's well designed. It's a little bit sad that this isn't just a given, but P-Bandai kits can be pretty minimal effort and bafflingly slapdash efforts. 
The pair of kits here use beautiful plastic materials and they're well color separated. And there's a ton of thought put into representing the functions of the characters like the beam cannons as deployment that make them more than just a lazy representation of the mobile suits. You get the V8 and the Mercurius very complete right out of the box. So that brings us to number 2, their P Bandai Limited. This will come up every time Bandai releases wonderful kits which I think would make fans really happy and these two more than fit the bill. They're excellent kits that don't have the usual caveats like the bad case of remold syndrome or are very niche characters. Lots of people love the Veye and the Mercurius and lots of people would love to have them. I mean, there's no way the Maganac gets a retail release being as niche as it is, you know, not that I'm complaining. And somehow this pair is deemed too obscure or too low in demand to get a retail release as well. What the hell Bandai? And number 3, it's a good time to be a Gundam Wing fan. The HG line is fast becoming a great place for Gundam Wing fans, with the 5 lead Gundams all but certain to be covered entirely, and then the Oz mobile suits getting these two here. Combined with the RG tall geese, and you can have quite the wonderful lineup in 1144 scale. If you're among the fans just mentioned, you owe it to yourself to hunt down this box set. This was made by engineers who love Gundam Wing and they made it just for you. I feel almost all the Gundam Wing kits seem to get a lot of care and love from the engineers and I sure hope this trend continues past the Valle and the Mercurius pair right here. So that's a review of the HG V8 and Mercurius. It's an excellent box set, even if it means you have to explain all the time why you bought two of the same things. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates and sneak peeks at upcoming videos and projects. Links are in the description below. Or. Hang out here some more and watch the review of the same pair from the 1995's non-grade release. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.